So I'm going to mention a champion to you. And you need to tell me the first pro player that comes to your mind mm -hmm. when I say that champion. Okay. Ezreal? Ezreal... Wait, who's a good Ezreal, actually? Tinkazi? Tevi. Upset. Mm, x Matthew. Kobe. Uh, no, I came up. It's not like iconic champs, no? Is there any legendary Ezreal player? Ruler? Ruler? Uh, Uzi. Defty. Viper. Not buying it. Kane. Kane? Uh, I don't even know if anyone played him ever that I watched. Oh, I forgot his name. Kenya. Xef Xen. Can I be? Selfmates? A yo yo. Inspired. Because Inspired was always trying to play Kane in Scrims and I was always like refusing, like not letting him playing it. Yeah, I mean, I was the only one saying, yeah, go for it. <laughs> the other people did not like it, I have to be honest. Welcome everyone to the penultimate day of the LEC 2023 spring regular season. You can see some of the activities that our viewers can do while they're in the studio. You can cosplay, um, you can... That's the Kit Kat Saturday thing, but it's Pantheon. Yeah, you, you can, can get a cat from SK, you can touch his biceps. And his um, biceps. <laughs> Uh, there's a little stand where you can turn the Wheel of Fortune, the BDS Wheel of Fortune, and get gifts. There's a whole shop. It's really fun. But now, also fun. My name is Shox, and I'm joined by Yamato and Ender, as we have two days left to go before it's the end of the regular season, so the race is on. It really is. It, it all comes down to this. I feel like yesterday I was I was over in Valorant land getting ready okay. for that show, getting ready. But the fact is we have four teams that are just battling for the last two spots uh, to, to make it into top eight. And it's a really tight race. I love this format. Holy moly. Imagine yeah. being in the middle of the split and you're like, can they make it in five weeks? But instead we have so much tension already. Yeah, exactly. and you're, you're doing the little finger dance too. like Jazz hands. Something like <laughs> casting that. Casting a spell on us all. I love it. Jazz hands all day. So let's look at the bottom half of the standings four teams are effectively fighting for two spots in the group stage fanatic excel mad lions and heretics we're going to talk about who we will think will make it and who won't you can do the same discord.lec.gg let us know who you think will not make it to the best of three stage. So to get into this one, let's look at the strength of schedule, the teams that they still have left to play in these next two days to maybe get more of an inkling of what the possibilities are for these two teams. The fact is, I don't think anyone has an actual easy schedule. Fnatic and Mad Lions got like the worst end, I think, having G2 just as an option here. Uh, but even like someone like Excel playing against Astralis and BDS, more like middle of the pack teams, like those are still really tough opponents that are looking very hot at the moment. It's so tricky as well in this format, considering they're playing B ones it's like all of these teams are so different in their identity and it's so hard to prepare yourself specifically for the team that you're facing so the best thing you can do is kind of remove the name tags maybe figure out some target bans maybe ban draven against g2 could be good maybe. <laughs> but the best thing you can do is just make sure that you have your own identity your own plan and don't get lost in this uh, search for trying to counter the enemy too hard. Just bring your best and maybe you can cause uh, the opposite win because that is what is going to be necessary and for all, all the playing, teams. And uh, they're all playing teams that are above them in the standings. They're not playing each other, which could be good, I guess. But on the other hand, they're all above you in standing, so that's going to be hard. Yeah, I think everyone's <laughs> wishing they had like a chance against Fnatic because Fnatic's the team with one extra win yeah. above them and they could bring it down because if Fnatic oh, don't win a game, say, and these guys just split halfway, we've got a lot of ties uh, Underway that we'd have to play through. So let's start by talking about Fnatic then. They were down in the dumps, they were out, the stocks were being sold a couple of weeks ago. Now though, they are up there uh, with three wins and they seem to have really found their form. I think just the fact that they won that one game and overcame that hurdle, I think that coming into spring they came with very different expectations and I feel like just watching Legends in action and how the team is interacting overall, it seems like they've changed the perspective and focus on actual improvement and I think that Fnatic have found their stride, found an identity in terms of what they play champion-wise and I think that, uh, you know, the main question is what's going to happen when these champions get target banned? Interesting that you say um, they focused on 
change gears and focus on improvement? What do you think they were focusing on before that? Uh, I think it's just, it's so hard when you come into that winter split and you have so high expectations that you've set for yourself with, with like Wunder, Humanoid, this roster. You have so high expectations. You didn't practice so hard in the, in the previous season. And then maybe some of the problems you face feel so low on your list that it feels almost inevitable and hopeless yeah. that you're going to recover from it. And I think that the perspective was just so different coming into spring where the expectations weren't as heavy and the pressure wasn't as heavy because in, in the end, the main thing you can do is focus on the process. If the process is nutritious and you're actually moving forward, the results will come naturally because you can't control what all the other teams are doing in the league. Yeah, they basically had to reform their team, right? Yeah. So they have to like figure out how they want to play to start things off, which is why I think Oscar Rennen showing up multiple games in a row now has been such an amazing look for him, right? Like the first time he had the jacks, so he got, gets like the three kills on the top side to start off. It's like, okay, that's a great way to start it off, but you can't really learn that much of him as a player. But this Olaf game where he's getting pressured, he's carrying through dominating up against that Gnar and especially later into the game, fantastic stuff. Absolutely, they were up versus Mad yesterday and what a fall from Grace as we are um, looking at handshakes. Um, Mad, wow, what a fall from Grace. Exactly one month ago, in fact, they were playing the finals here, the Winter Split Finals. That's incredible. What's going on there without changing anything in their roster? Yeah, well, I think there, there has just been a, a bit of a slump, I would say, from some of the players like the bot lane ever since that final against G2 was far less dominant than I think we saw them throughout uh, the regular season in winter. I also think Niski, uh, especially early on, was playing some funky champions in the mid lane that may be harder for Mad Lions to play around in the, med in the mid lane. I think also something important to note is always in terms of uh, performance, you find your peak and then when you reach uh, a hurdle or a wall, you need to break everything down again and then rebuild again. And I think when I look at Mad Lions, after the G2 finals, even within the G2 finals, I felt like they kind of lost their way. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the matches they're playing here, I feel like they don't have that same level of confidence in their play and it seems like they are so far away from their peak. When it comes to Mad Lions, when they play at their best, I feel like Elioya, Hilly are the ones that are dominating the game but now it just looks so disjointed and it feels like they can't find their place in the current meta. The results from Discord are behind us. And then to bring it back to our my initial question, we haven't spoken about Team Heretics and we haven't spoken about Excel. So where do you think they land? And might those be the two teams that you would write off? Honestly, for me, I, I'm not much of a believer in Team Heretics. I think Yankos continues to show really strong early games for them, but this team just falters in the mid, in mid to late game too frequently. And especially, I think, when a lot of these teams have started drafting more like scaling, more team fight options, which has simplified the game for them, you're not having any luck if you're faltering in the later stages against those types of teams. So for me, I don't see a world where Heretics makes it through. And uh, I don't know. I think it's, it's close between Mad and Excel because Mad, we know how good they can be, but they have not yeah. been that. Just Excel as well, just to add, I feel like they have some decent drafts, some decent reads, but I feel like they just don't have any confidence in their play. They're never pulling the trigger. And then the enemy can prepare and take the game away like that Elder Steel. That can't happen. You need to throw everything in there. I think that's a, a good directive for most of the teams playing that want to make their way into the groups. And bearing any miracles, Astralis should have a spot in the group stage. And ahead of their game versus Excel today, Frankie caught up with Finn. Take it away. Thank you, Shox. I haven't had the opportunity to speak to Finn yet, so I was delighted when I heard that you would be playing from the studio today. But you're not actually going to be playing on stage because XL can't be here, unfortunately. So why did you choose to still play backstage? I think it's just nice to come to the studio to kind of keep your routines the, sim uh, the same. Just do the same right to the studio. You do your group huddle, you do your meditation, you get your coffee at the studio. You just do everything the same as you can, as you usually do, to keep some kind of consistency when you go onto that stage. Coffee is very important when you're a Nordic player. Definitely, yeah. It's brutally addicted. <laughs> I need to ask you about the arguments <clears throat> going into this weekend, because they were mentioned to me by Kobe yesterday. What was going on when you were cooking up the draft for this week three? Just trying to figure out what I can say on air. <laughs> uh, no, definitely we, we had some arguments. There's always arguments, I think, in, in teams. People are fighting and people have very strong opinions. and. A lot of the times people don't really agree on what is the best course to winning. So then you have two options. You have this guy's right and we go on this guy's or you compromise. Uh, and that's kind of the balance you have to find when you have these arguments to make sure non, no one is just like getting super offended or no one is just getting mad. Uh, people get mad, people get frustrated, but I think we did a really good job at just collecting everyone's insight and, and getting a, reaching a conclusion. And I think it's always a hurdle, but this week we overcame it. 
How often are you right, Finn? I'm always right. Of course you're Obviously. always right. How do you decide then who you're going to be taking in the top lane? Because we've seen a decent amount of variety from you so far this split. Well, I think top lane right now has a lot of different options depending on what you want. Usually if you blind pick, you're kind of limited in your options because in any meta where you have to blind pick, you usually have to pick the strongest champions because those are the ones that can handle all the little weird counter picks because they're just... Uh, uh, pound for pound the strongest, but if you do have the counter pick option, you can go a little wild, you can get into these niche picks and I think I've done both uh, throughout my time as a pro player and today uh, we'll see what happens. How are you finding the comms at the moment? I am still laughing over the clip of the near pentakill oh. that Leader got and unfortunately uh, someone might have got away from Team Heretics. Uh, what was happening there? Oh, actually, I saw the triple kill and I assumed it was Kobe and then I heard Leader screaming, Penta, 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 and I see the said icon. I'm like, how, how did he get three kills in a fight? That's just crazy. Uh, I was a lot of energy, obviously winning. is every, Like, winning every game is fun. So when you're on that final push, there's always a lot of energy in comps because people are usually pretty happy. Uh, oh yeah, sadly no Penta kill for Leader yesterday. Well, hopefully he might find one in the next two matches because it's, you know, it's only day number two of week three, so we'll see. Yeah. But right now, we need to do something very, very special. We've got to take an even closer look at Astralis because a very special esports journalist has been oh, visiting God, guy. your gaming house exclusively for this report. So let's take a look. Hello. My name is Blend R. Slenderman, and I am here today to walk us through the wonderful world of esports. This is a trend that's been taking over the internet where uh, poor spellers and presumably socially challenged people face off against each other through the internet wires underground, through the sky and the radio waves that are connecting one another so that they can find out who is the best at video games without screen peeking from the couch. So you play the League of Legends in, in the League of Legends? Yeah. That's kind of pretentious, don't you think? Calling yourself a, a legend and all that. Um, I don't call myself a legend. It's just what the game is called. Right. Uh, okay. But then where is the League of Legends? Like, where is the League of um, Legends? There's an LEC. It's based in Berlin. I think you, you mean Lek, right? Hmm? Lek? Players born after the turn of the millennium have an inherent advantage at League of Legends. The years they've spent training by playing cookie clicker gave them the added reflexes to click faster than your average human being. So you all live together here, right? Exactly. Whose mom's house is this? Or, or dad? I haven't met them yet, so I don't know. So not yours? Not mine, no. Okay. What is the role of a coach? To teach the players the game. So he's better than you at the game? No. Then how can he teach you anything? Even though he's not better than us at the game. In order to be able to play the game in sync with your teammates, understanding is key. Therefore, coaches put their players through rigorous group activities such as anime movie night and communal bath time. So. Who is noob? He's always in my games. Mm -hmm. Everyone's always usually yelling at him. Like N-O-O-B. Yeah, there's always a noob. Are you a noob? I can be sometimes. It depends. So it's like more of a spectrum. Kinda, yeah. It's fluid. I guess so. Why is everyone so angry at my mother when I play? In order to win a League of Legends, it is very important to be able to use words such as flabbergast, flubberduck, fire truck, shindig, shongshigablongshigz, and schnockabluck. This is in order to destroy your opponent's mentality and get them out of the game. So, how do you decide what character to play? Uh, it's the meta usually. The meta being the what is strong in the on the current patch. That's so you check. Facebook to get that. So where are you going? I'm going up here, top lane. That's uh, where I live. It's uh, my lane. I thought you lived here. Well, I do in the real world, yeah. But when I play a game, I get paid to play. World of Warcraft. Game. I remember that one. Okay. Um, did you just die there? 
No, I didn't. That was the Dominion. Oh wait, no, you just died there. No, that's the minion dying. I, I can't. Again, <laughs> dude, you you suck. This has been Blend on Lek, a deep insight into the lives of a professional, a sports player, and their lack thereof. On the next episode, we'll find out when do they actually kick the ball, how do they know whose turn it is, and what the hell does a coach actually do? Until next time.